When we left off last time, there were actually fewer vacuum tubes on the desk, but uh, we'll, we'll save those for a future episode. Uh, but we had a good plan and idea for two cards that we wanted to make to put into the hexadecimal relay calculator. We came up with the design and design spark PCB. And now what we need to do is we need to take that design and put it into something that our three axis CNC mill can uh, read and then we can cut those boards out. So we're gonna hop back into the computer and I'll show you how we do that. And then we'll head out to the garage and cut them out. So the first step is to take the design that we have here and export it into something called a Gerber file. And we can do that by selecting uh, output manufacturing plots up here. And because these boards are going to be cut on the mill and there's no chemicals or anything like that going on, there's no need for a resist or a paste on the bottom copper and there's no way for us to print a silk screen. So we're just going to deselect those. And we'll just go ahead and export them completely. Now a, a warning will pop up here saying that there's no board outline. And that's fine for this because I want to do the board outline in a separate Gerber file. We can take all those files and I'll just put them into a folder called Gerber. And then we'll go back and we'll do the exact same thing again, except this time we're only going to export the bottom copper and we're going to turn on the board outline, but turn off the bottom copper layer. So that way we have a Gerber file of just the outline of the boards. I'm just going to rename the file here so that it doesn't uh, overwrite the file that we already have in the Gerber section. The next program that we're going to use is a program called FlatCam. This is a free program that is specifically made for converting Gerber files to G-code. So we'll open up our Gerber files here. We'll start with the bottom copper and you can see that it shows up here. That's how our copper was laid out. Next, we'll open up the uh, board outline. You can see the board outline shows up here. And finally, we'll import the drill data. So it'll bring in and show all the holes that are supposed to be drilled. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select everything and we're gonna flip it on the X axis. Now, the reason that we do this is because we're cutting the bottom copper, not the top copper. So when I put the board on the mill, the bottom copper will be facing up, which will be a mirror image of the way that we're looking at it on the computer right now. So we need to just flip everything on the X axis and that lines everything up correctly. Now we're gonna start by creating the isolation geometry for our board outline. I like to do this one first because it's one that I can make some mistakes on. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to double click the Gerber file and then we have a couple options here you can see. And one of those is the tool diameter and this is just the diameter of the cutting tool that I'm using on the mill which is a 1.5 millimeter cutting tool and it's only going to make one pass so we'll click generate isolation geometry and you can see that the cuts that are supposed to be made show up in red here. Now the way that FlatCam does its geometry is it does a cut on the inside and on the outside of the board outline there. So you can see that we have two red lines, one is on the inside, one is on the outside. And then the, the tool is going to move in that space between the red line and the green line. And if we're cutting on the inside and we're cutting on the outside, one of those cuts is now superfluous. So we can, we can get rid of that cut. So we can do that by right clicking on the geometry, clicking edit, and then in the edit screen, we can click the cut that we don't need, select it, hit delete, and then exit out of the editor and save the edited object. Now next, I'm gonna do the bottom copper. With this one, I need to select the tool diameter. Now I'm using a 0.1 millimeter 60 degree V bit. Now because the cut will be going down, that means that the deeper that the bit goes, the wider the cut's gonna be. So there was a little math necessary to figure out exactly what the tool diameter was supposed to be at this step. So I did the math and it came out to 0 0.331. So we'll just go ahead and punch that in. And then next we're going to select the number of isolation passes. I like to do three isolation passes. That makes sure that the traces are really well isolated and helps prevent getting solder bridges from the trace next to it or to the ground plane. And then we'll just click generate isolation geometry and you'll see a bunch of red lines show up. Now next we're going to do the drill data. There's really very little that we're going to change in the settings here. The only thing is that through experience I've discovered that a Z depth of 1.7 is not enough. So I, 
I tend to bump that up to two, and that makes sure that the drill goes all the way through the board. So we'll create the drill G code, and then you'll see here that on the project screen, it's dropped down to underneath the C and C job section. And so we'll come back to that when we're ready to save the G code. So next, we're gonna start creating the G code for the individual cuts for the outline cut and the uh, isolation cuts. Now with the outline cut, because we're using the 1.5 millimeter bit, we're gonna leave the settings pretty much exactly as they are, you know, with the uh, tool type set to C1, our cut Z depth to negative 2.5, Four, and we're going to keep the feed rate pretty slow because our giant mill only has a maximum speed of about 3000 RPM. And so then we'll keep that feed rate at 120. We'll do generate CNC object and it'll show up in blue to show that that's a CNC object that we've generated. So next we'll do the bottom copper. And so we'll select the first isolation cut and you'll see here that under tool type, we have a bunch of options. And since I'm using a V bit, we want to select the V option. And then when we select the V option, some of the parameters down here here change a little bit. It is a 0.1 millimeter tip, so we're going to leave that, but the V angle is, as I mentioned earlier, 60 degrees. So we'll change that over to 60 degrees here. And I like to bump up the feed rate on this one. Despite the fact that our spindle speed is relatively slow, with a feed rate of 120, it would just take a really long time to cut, although the cuts would be cleaner. We'll see the result of this at the end when we take a look at the actual boards. But I like to bump the feed rate up to about 320. And then we'll just generate CNC object and we'll see the blue fill in where we've generated our first isolation cut there. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the second isolation cut and the third isolation cut. Now that we have CNC jobs created for all five of our steps, we'll go through and save the G-code for each one. So we'll start with the first isolation cut. That's the first cut that we're gonna do on the mill. So I'll rename it to 001 uh, and then, you know, new board. Uh, and this makes it easy to know which file goes in which order when I'm cutting them on the mill. Uh, and then for the second and third isolation cut, we'll save them the same way as 002 and 003. Now that we have our three isolation cuts done, we can do the next two in either order that we like. We could you know, cut the outline of the boards and then do a drill, or we can do the drill first and then cut the outline of the boards. And I, I like to drill, I like to do the drilling first and then do the, the board outline cut last. So we'll go ahead and set our drill G code up to file number four, and then we'll set the board outline cut to file number five. Now those are our five files for our CNC mill. So we're just going to copy those files to the flashcard and then head out to the garage. This is the behemoth we're going to cut our boards on. You can see that it is a Bridgeport Easy Track with an Accurite Mill Power 3 axis CNC conversion on it. You can see that we have quite a big unit here in the back that converts the 220 single phase that we have to 223 phase for the spindle motor of the Bridgeport. So the first thing that we need to do is pull the old flash card out put the new one in, the system does have to be off before you put the new flash card in, and then we can flip the system on and get the boot up started. Now a common problem with milling PC boards is how do you ensure that the PC board is mounted perfectly flat with respect to the spindle? Because if you're off by just a little bit, one side of the board may not cut at all and the other side may cut completely through the board. Now there are some really fancy solutions, some auto leveling software out there that takes measurements along the board and then adjusts your G code with regards to those measurements. That way you get a perfect cut every time. But I've kind of found an alternative solution and that is mounting a block of wood. This is just a, a two by four. So we mount the block of wood in the vise, and then I take the, the biggest bit that I have and I level that block of wood out. So this way I know that the surface of that wood is perfectly level with respect to the spindle every time I cut. Then to attach the board to the block of wood, I just lay down some thin dual-sided carpet tape. Carpet tape is really, really strong stuff. It's more than strong enough to hold the PC board in place while we cut through it. So this is the PC board that we're gonna use. This is an Uxell, Uxell, U-X-C-L-L, a uh, set of single-sided PC boards that I found on Amazon. They were really pretty cheap, about $20 for 25 of them, but the quality is not quiet there. And there's another manufacturer that makes single-sided PC boards called uh, Paramount, and they make much, much higher quality boards that seem to cut much better 
on my mill. And I would recommend using those over these Excel ones. But I made all of the boards on the hexadecimal calculator with these Excel boards. So for the uh, purposes of keeping everything consistent, we're going to go ahead and use these. So once I have the 2x4 flat and the PC board taped down to the 2x4, I put in our first bit, which is the uh, V bit here. And I need to get that V bit to zero on the board. And I do this with a 0.04 millimeter feeler gauge. So I'll just slowly bring the spindle closer and closer while sliding the feeler gauge between the bit and the board until the feeler gauge doesn't slide through anymore. Then we just open up the datum tab, set our Z equals to zero, click use, and now we've zeroed out our Z axis. For zeroing out the X and Y axis, I kind of just eyeball this. I get it to that forward most left most corner and get it to pretty much as close as I can on that corner. Then when I'm happy, again, I just open up the datum tab, hit X equals zero, Y equals zero, hit use, and now we've zeroed out all three axes and we can go ahead and load our program. Once the program is loaded, we kick the spindle on and then we hit the big green go button and away it goes. It'll start its first cut and now it's just a waiting game. We just sit back and watch it cut. Now because it was set up as five individual files, when it gets done with one file, it will come to a stop. And then we need to load the next file in. So it's not a completely and totally autonomous process. I do need to keep an eye on it and load the next file when it's ready. After we've got our three isolation cuts done, it's time to move on to drilling. But how do I re-zero the Z-axis with the drill bit and make sure that it's perfect? Well, the way that I do it is that I put the bit loosely in the chuck and I bring the spindle down, pushing the bit into the chuck until the Z-axis reads 0.0. .0. And then at that point in time, I tighten down the chuck and I know that the tip of the drill bit on the surface of the board is at 0.0. .0. So we do a tool change for the drill bit. After we get done drilling all of our holes, we'll do another tool change for the bit to cut out the outline of the boards and then we'll be finished. So now we have the boards completely cut out. You can see here they're still actually mounted to the block. I need to peel them off of there. And then this requires quite a bit of cleanup. I have to use some uh, Goo Gon to get rid of the stickiness on the back. And then I need to clean up some of the rough edges around the traces. And here are the completed boards ready for us to solder. You can see that the traces look a little rough actually. And if we take a closer look at them, you can see that the edges are quite rough. Now the traces are fully isolated and this will work. It's just not very pretty. And this is a result of these cheaper Uxel boards that I was mentioning earlier. So if you take a look at these four smaller boards that I've got hanging out down here, these are for one of those uh, vacuum tube projects that I mentioned earlier. These are the Paramount boards. And I cut these using the exact same method, the exact same uh, measurements and everything that we did on the Excel boards. And you can see that these cut just immensely better. They still need a little bit of cleanup here and there, but all in all, these are much cleaner, much nicer boards. But these boards on these Excel boards are gonna work just fine. That's how I've cut all the other boards. They looked pretty much identical to this and they seem to be working just fine. And hopefully these will work just fine once we get some components on them. So that's what we'll do next time. We'll solder them up, plug them in and see what they do.